Your Ray Lord just wants a hug. When you see it skating around like this, it's lonely. So give it a hug like that and it'll stop skating. That's the easiest way to get your Wraith Lord back under control when it needs to be. After all, the Wraith Lord is the only one of its kind. Alternatively, you can actually take Locus of Death. This will prevent the Wraith Lord from moving, and then you can use your Traversal skill, Summon Skeletal Mage, in order to bring it along with you, or resummon the Wraith Lord wherever you'd like it to be placed. This is a high ward build, and you're going to essentially keep your character alive while your Wraith Lord does all the work. You can actually get far more ward than what you're seeing in this video, but what we have here is sufficient to get up to 700 corruption, as you're seeing from the gameplay. What you'll need in order to increase it further will be some Frostbite Shackles with Legendary Potential. That'll allow you to slam the affix of missing health gained as ward per second and get far more ward because Frostbite Shackles have ward retention built into them. Here's a pair of Frostbite Shackles, in case you want to see the affix that I'm talking about, the bottom line here where you gain ward retention per uncapped cold resistance. This will significantly increase the ward, especially once you slam the affix of that missing health gained as ward into them. Now the reason I'm showing you this build at this point for an update is because I want to show you that it's possible to hit 700 corruption with only 12,000 ward. And although this video isn't about RNG, it's important to know that if you're farming the endgame loop in Last Epoch, you may have several hundred echoes or more before you're able to get Frostbite Shackles and roll that legendary potential into them. For reference, I've done just about a dozen Frostbite Shackles, two of which had two legendary potentials, the rest of them had a single legendary potential, and none of them came out with the missing health gained as ward. Now I certainly hope that you have better luck in terms of acquiring Frostbite Shackles with legendary potential and then landing that affix on the slam when you go to do it. However, it's not required. As you can see, you can clear nearly 700 corruption without having the Frostbite Shackles for this particular setup. Now, it of course is gonna be better with the Frostbite Shackles, but there's a lot of people that say, oh, the build's only playable with a really lucky slam. And that's not really the case for this particular meta build. If you're unfamiliar with the Wraith Lord build in general, I'll leave a link in the video description where you can see the original guide that talks a lot more about the synergies. We're gonna focus a bit more on some of the changes that I've made to the build in order to help you progress or get to higher corruption. Originally, I was running Exsanguinous with 15% increased health, and this was a great starter item for this particular build that's gonna allow you to get more ward. Later, I was able to even further upgrade that to get additional vitality and a higher percentage of that increased life. Finally, I was able to get an Exsanguinous that slammed both increased necrotic minion damage, plus three to summon Wraith, and along with that, some increased minion damage as well. Out of all those affixes, I actually think that the plus three to summon Wraith gives the most benefit. And nice feature is that that comes with the minion damage as well. The exalted item that I used with his chest also had a chance to get percentage health, and I would have preferred that over the increased necrotic minion damage. So keep that in mind when you're looking for an upgrade on your own character. For the additional skill points, I was able to add another point into necrotic hunger, a 20% damage increase for the base damage that this Wraith Lord does. And on top of that, you can get Wraith Bringer, which boosts the cast speed by 20%. Cast speed is just huge for this build since everything always critically strikes. In the near future, I'll be looking to slam another Wraith Lord's Harbor, and I think I'm on the fourth or maybe even the fifth one at this point. What I'm looking to get here is plus ranks to Volatile Zombie because those also have added minion damage on it. In the meantime, I've only been able to get Intelligence as the best stat for this particular line, and Intelligence is great. That's gonna increase the minion damage that your Wraith Lord does, and it adds some ward retention. I've swapped to using Chronostasis over Reach of the Grave but I would use a Reach of the Grave if I had a two legendary potential with a preferred Aphexus. We'll talk about that in just a second. Chronostasis, you're still looking for this minion spell damage that you can get rolled onto this for the slam. If you don't have that, you may as well use an exalted item. Other benefits this is gonna give you is additional ward per second, additional intelligence, buffing your minion, adding some ward retention, the increased attack speed and the melee skills consuming ward are irrelevant for this build. On a wand, you can also get the increased minion spell damage to further the output of your Wraith Lord, but more importantly, you can also get necrotic penetration for your minion through a wand and you can't get that on a sword. Here you can see on the wand that you can actually get necrotic penetration and minion necrotic penetration. This is a suffix, so if you're looking for it in the prefixes, that's why it's not there. But this can be applied to axes, daggers, scepters, wands, two-handed axes and two-handed staff, so you cannot put this onto a sword. That being said, the Reach of the Grave is a preferred choice if you get two legendary potential, so you can get that minion spell damage and the necrotic penetration at the same time. That, of course, would be a lucky slam. It's imperative that your Wraith Lord remains buffed by Dreadshade at all times. Now, this will actually wear off after a period of time. Among other buffs, this will most importantly get Egoism, and that's going to allow your Wraith Lord to always critically strike. This is an enormous boost to the damage output of this build. It can be difficult to target your Wraith Lord while it's moving around, so one of the best suggestions is to just resummon it whenever you want to reapply the Dreadshade, and then you can easily target the Wraith Lord before it starts repositioning. You'll also want to keep the Infernal Shade buff up on your Wraith Lord as well, and this will persist forever, so that's a lot easier to do. You can simply cast it on one time. However, 
This is going to allow you to get the Manic Pyre, which can increase your cast speed of the Wraith Lord by up to 72%, and that's a huge bonus. Infernal Shade also doesn't have a cooldown, so if you misclick this ability, you can simply just recast it until it applies to your Wraith Lord. However, Dreadshade, if miscast, has a longer cooldown, and when you're not critically striking with the Wraith Lord, you might get overwhelmed by enemies. As you enter an Echo, you can just summon your Wraith Lord and then hit it with both of the buffs that allow you to get moving and clear the Echo pretty easily. Overall, this is a safe build and it does tons of damage. The gameplay for the build really hasn't changed much. You're going to use your Summon Skeletal Mage in order to teleport around. That'll summon a large Skeletal Mage, which will then be consumed by the Wraith Lord for additional health and damage. You can cast Summon Volatile Zombies in order to again further boost the output of your Wraith Lord and basically repeat this process as much as possible. If you want to keep an eye out for Exiled Mages, you'll definitely want to be farming every single one of these that you can. The reason for that is they have the potential to drop the gloves with the experimental affix that you're looking to slam into those Frostbite Shackles. In this case, we did not get a pair of gloves to drop, we actually got a belt. However, I'm going to pick that belt up anyways, and I'm going to use a Rune of Research. This gives us a chance in order to get a Glyph of Insight. In this case, we didn't get one, but you can use Glyphs of Insight in order to actually place whichever experimental affix you want on a piece of gear. I'll leave a link to a website, Tunks Lab, that actually has the information for this if you're curious. It's not useful for the Wraith Lord since we want the highest percentage in terms of that health converted to ward, but if you're looking to play something like Sentinel Healing Hands, it could be really valuable and save you a lot of time. In general, you'll basically keep your character alive by running around dodging incoming abilities from the enemies and essentially just letting the Wraith Lord clear out everything in front of you. Again, make sure that the wraiths are not underneath the Wraith Lord, that way you can place your Dread Shade in order to refresh their duration. The Infernal Shade will not need to be replenished. In general, I'm not looking to push this any higher until I get a pair of Frostbite Shackles, but let's go ahead and do the Shade of Orbis, just so you can see that the build still does perfectly fine at this level. Shade of Orbis is probably the most difficult encounter with this amount of ward. I'm going to just spam some potions in order to buff up this Wraith Lord prior to the Shade coming down, and then then we'll engage the combat when my wraiths go onto the shade. I'll then make sure I get safe and then I'll rebuff the wraith lord just to ensure more damage. You can use your teleport or traversal skill in order to pull your wraith lord if you think it's going to go down from any of the enemy's abilities as well. But in general, the shade of orbis will go down fairly quick even on this corruption as we close in on 700. What we'll see here is hopefully a few more seconds and I can actually use summon volatile zombies essentially to execute the boss as well. Now I thought it would be fitting to show Formosus, since that's likely what you'll be farming in order to get more Frostbite Shackles. But the boss encounters in general are pretty easy. Like I said, the shade is really the most difficult. Summon your Wraith Lord, hit it with both buffs, work your way forward. We're basically going to follow the same tactic here, however a lot of bosses, there's a little bit of a hallway prior to getting to them. Just start spamming some health potions, that's going to buff up your Wraith Lord. Once you get here, just make sure that you're free of the other enemies, otherwise you could fall down to any of the incoming damage. After that, it's relatively easy. Your Wraith Lord is going to do so much damage, this boss will be very quick. Essentially run in circles, keeping your character safe, and if need be, teleport yourself and all the minions out of any harm. Again, you can always refresh the buffs, whether that be the Dreadshade, if the time elapse requires it. Otherwise, just keep the damage up and eventually the boss will go down. Hopefully, we get some Frostbite Shackles. Oh, we got one legendary potential, which means we can now wait for another pair of experimental gloves. Here's an example of how you can add an experimental affix to an item. And again, you'll want to use Tunks Lab in order to make sure that you have this all configured. This shows you how many prefixes and suffixes are on the item and which experimental affix will result. In this particular example, I'm not rolling these for the Wraith Lord. You'll want to make sure that you have a higher percentage for the missing health gained as ward. I'm going to use this pair for a Sentinel build if I'm fortunate enough to get it. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch, and have a great day.